One of the, they did this um, kind of an ex, uh, experiment where they took a non-believer, an atheist, did not believe in God at all. And they took a believer and they asked both of them the same question. They said, if your mother was thrown into the hell fire and burned by a law, by God, how would that make you feel? Now, the question for a for an atheist, you know, it should be, you know, I don't believe in God. You know, for a believer, of course, they believe in God. But they weren't really monitoring what that person said in response. What they were doing is they were measuring their, uh, their breathing and their blood pressure and all of that. And what they miraculously found was that the atheist and the believer, both of them, their, their breathing became heavier, their blood pressures increased, they started sweating, like all of this stuff happened. And it's ajeeb because the atheist doesn't believe in God. But then that reminds me of, a, of some verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُونَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَرُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ That on that day, when their own tongues, their mouths will be shut and their own bodies will testify against them. And even in the dunya with this experiment, the atheist may not believe, but his body is testifying against him. His blood pressure is going up. His breathing is becoming heavier because the soul knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the same way, in this blessed month that is about to, that we're about to embark on, the main, one of the main uh, concepts of Ramadan, one of the main uh, things is forgiveness. To, to forgive, to be forgiven. And the thing that is ajeeb about forgiveness is, one of the things, if you've been hurt by somebody, or if you've had a traumatic, you know, occurrence, a traumatic event, or a friend, for instance, hurt you real bad, or, or you know, somebody stole your money, Every single time you think about that thing, you're reliving that. You're reliving that tragedy. You know, you're reliving it every... So forgiveness really is not about the other person. Forgiveness is for your own self. Because I can, this mic is not that heavy. I can hold it out here for a long time. But finally, it's going to overcome me. And it's going to be a burden and my hand's going to fall. And when you carry the rancor, you carry that animosity, you carry that hurt in your own heart, it overburdens your own soul. So forgiveness is for your own self. So when you forgive others, they might not even be deserving of it, but you're deserving of the peace. You yourself are deserving of the peace. And so... This month of Ramadan, what are we doing? We're, we're not eating, everything that's halal for us. We're not drinking, you know, no relations, you know, from sun up to sundown. Why do we do that? You, have you ever like been audited by the IRS or taken a test and waited for your score? You know, you're gonna, that's just gonna give you, you're gonna get an A and you're gonna, you know, go to med school or not or, or, or something, you know, you can't eat. <laughs> you can't, you know, you can't think. You're, you're tripping the whole time. Why? It's so hard because you know what? Because you're so focused on that thing, you know? Because that's the thing that occupies your mind, you know? And what happens when, with Ramadan is when you're not doing all of those stuff, what are you doing? You're adhering to a higher calling. You're focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does that do? Why does fasting, why does every, every time like about Ramadan's about to come, I hear so many people going, oh man. You know, a lot of people, you know, that understand that they, they're like, oh my God, I hope I make it. Ya Allah, balifna Ramadan. Let us, let us receive Ramadan. Let us get there. You know, the Ashab prepared six months before, but some people are like, man, I'm going to get a headache. I can't have coffee in the morning. I'm going to stop smoking. You know, like all, the, all of these things come to their minds. But then, Three, four, five days pass by and it becomes easy. Why? Why? Because when you love somebody, like when you love a woman, 
You can't eat. Sometimes, you know, you're just like thinking about it. When you love Allah and you're focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that thing becomes easy for you. That action becomes, Allah makes it easy for you and you, for yourself, it becomes easier and easier. And forgiveness in this month is, is it's the, it's the focus of this month is forgiveness. And, and, and see, Savannah talked about, you know, people that are caught up, people that can't forgive, people that are going to cancel people, people that are caught up in these kind of things, it's because of a void inside of themselves. It's because they're in reality looking for divine love. They have a void of love. And they can't, and they're searching for that thing. Can somebody give me some water, uh, uh, a little water, please? Sorry, Father. It always weighs on me when I talk about Allah. It really does. So, uh, so it's about that void because you know they're missing something in their own hearts. The Arabs they call bread aish, literally life. Aish. Why? Because bread sustains people. The Mujahideen they used to just have bread and water. But if you look at the process of making bread, they take the wheat, they grind it, and then they turn it into dough, and then they knead that dough, and then finally what happens? They have to put it in the oven and bake it, and then it turns into bread. But that that oven, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for us to become mature, we have to go through, we have to be baked, we have to be, we have, the dough has to be kneaded. And then we have to become cooked. And when you become cooked, that's your maturity. That's all of these things that you go through in order to realize and to find the loss of Banu Wata. Now, the people that may have a void or not in their hearts, if in reality, you know, Ramadan, one of the things about Ramadan, what does it do? It allows you to focus on the loss of Banu Wata, give up things. We're not supposed to do idle talk. We're not supposed to be watching television, really. We're not supposed to be doing that, any of that stuff. What did the Prophet Sallallahu do for months at a time? He went to the to the Hira, and he, and he what did he, in, in uh, isolation, you know? And, and, he, and, he, and he concentrated, and he, he meditated, you know? What is all of that for? Was it to find who? Like one of the awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, I searched for Allah for 40 years. And then I realized, hey, Allah is not lost to be found. I have to find myself. So when you go into this state and you go into halwa and you go into isolation, it's really to find what? It's to find yourself. Because you should not have a void. Because you should have an understanding. We should all have an understanding that each one of us, every single one of us is like a universe. We're all small universes. Your hair is like the plants, right? Your veins, your blood are like the rivers. Your eyes are like the stars. And your heart is the sun. And everything is dependent on that sun. And that is why people, and what is so, and your, and your soul is the universe, this mysterious thing. So each one of you is so special. You're a universe. And what is it about? With that heart, you know the entire cosmos because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and when you realize that within yourself that Allah created you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's divine love. Because you know that Allah loves you. You don't need anybody else. You don't have to look for love in all the wrong places. And when you know that Allah loves you, then in return you love Allah, and you love yourself first, you can love other people. That's why the Prophet says, La yukminu ahadakum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidi walidi wa nasi ajmi. None of you believe until you love. And more than everything, and then what did Sayyidina Omar say? What did Sayyidina Omar say? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than everything except myself. 
You know, Sayyidina Umar was a teacher. 13 places in the Quran actually agreed with Sayyidina Umar. You know, what? when he said that, what did the Prophet say? Ya Umar, you have to love me even more than yourself. And then he said, okay, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than myself. But what, is, what does that mean? You have to love yourself first. Because if you won't know what love is, if you don't love yourself. How can you love anything if you don't love yourself? You can't love Allah. And then you love the Prophet, what? Because, because he's here for our souls. Because if you can't love the Prophet, you can't love Allah. If you don't love people, you don't love Allah. If you don't love people, you don't love Allah. Because just like your universe, they are a universe that has been also created. And the key to this forgiveness, and I'll say a quick story, inshallah, of Sayyidina Yusuf, alayhi salam, Joseph, peace be upon him, the grandchild of Sayyidina Ishaq, alayhi salam, what happened? Everybody knows the story. Eleven brothers, you know, they took him, they threw him in the well, all of that, you know. And then, but what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something in the Quran at the end of it when Yusuf alayhi salam, he becomes the governor of Egypt. And then his brothers all, they come there before him, all eleven of them, and his parents are there. And he takes, Allah says, and he says in the Quran, he takes his parents and he puts them up on thrones next to him. And he has his eleven brothers, and he says to to, uh, to his father, and he says, "This is this is my dream that I had that, I, that the eleven stars that were that were prostrating before." But what does he say at that point? He says, he says, Sayyidina Yusuf, from the blessings of Allah, he took me out of the prison. He took me out of the prison. Allah did a lot for him. Allah took him out of the well too. But because his brothers were all there, he didn't mention they took me out of the well. In the tafsir, he doesn't say they took me out of the well. Because what? It was kind of like po poking at them. Because they're the ones that threw him in the well. But he only mentions the sijin. He also only mentions the prison. And then after that, what is he saying? He says, and Allah it brought all of you back together to me. When what? When shaitan separated us. He then took it and put it all on shaitan. He didn't blame his brothers again. He didn't blame his brothers again. And this, like the Quran, Islam in itself, it's behavioral health, it's mental health, this forgiveness, it allows you to heal. And I will leave with a poem of saying uh, Imam al-Shafi, Rahimahullah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and I and I actually translate this and he says, and he says, and, and I'll just do the translation, he says, whenever somebody defiles my character, whenever somebody abuses me, whenever somebody makes up something about me, whenever somebody hurts me, I have forgiven them out of my love and reverence for the Lord of the world, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, because I do not want to show up on the day of judgment before my Lord and have somebody's entrance into Jannah depending on my forgiveness of what they had said to me because I too am in need of forgiveness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during Ramadan and tonight unite our hearts underneath his roof. May he bring us together. May he bring back the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. May we not let us be united with those that 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 lied about Maryam salam, that made up stuff about Sayyidina Aisha salam. And we not be among those that spread Bhutan and Ghiba and any of these things, and may Allah rectify us and bring us together in love as brothers and sisters, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers meant it to be. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Afu minkum, I took a little too long.